Our guest today is no stranger to exceeding expectations. Born with cerebral palsy, Nicholas Hamilton wasn't going to let anything stop him from following his older brother Lewis into motorsport. And in 2015, he became the first disabled driver to compete in the British Touring Car Championship. Uh, please welcome Nicholas Hamilton. <laughs> Guy. <laughs> well, I mean, given that reception, your book is perfectly named now that I have your attention, because you've certainly got our audience's yeah. attention. Yeah. Um, but I believe you were reluctant to write this book initially. Why was that? Um, I, I, I didn't think I deserved almost to, to write a book. I didn't feel like I'd, I'd achieved enough to, wow. to write a book. Um, I always thought people that write books are people that have like completed their rags to riches story almost. They've, they've got, you know, millions of pounds or whatever it was. And, um, I didn't think my voice was valuable enough, but I'm really, really surprised on how it's come out. It's been like a, a therapy session, and mm. um, I'm so proud of it. Really, I just want to help people through my life experiences, um, disabled people, able-bodied people. Um, and, yeah, what an amazing privilege it is to, to actually launch my book today. So. Yeah. yeah. If you were reluctant to begin with to write it, what was it that surprised you? Um, <laughs> As you did write it. Yeah, that was the. I don't know how much how much wisdom came out of me. Oh, yeah. I'm really surprised. Um, I'm actually impressed with myself as a human being. Oh, I love that. Because um, oh. I really didn't know what was going to come out. I didn't really. Um, I wasn't very confident. And obviously, when you're you know related to Lewis, yes, I'm his brother. Um, <laughs> better looking, obviously. But, <laughs> but um, I would actually you know, agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're always nervous about putting things out there because mm. you don't know how people are going to perceive it. Um, but, you know, when I was a kid, I was, I was really struggling for my purpose. I didn't understand why I had this disability. I just wanted to be like everybody else. And, um, and yeah, now I couldn't be prouder to be a disabled mm. person. And I just want to use what I've been through to help other people because my book isn't just for disabled people. It's, I'm just a human. Mm. I'm a human as well. And everybody struggles with, mm. um, you know, up and down yeah. moments. And, mm. and uh, what I was reading as well, you, the book is also for parents as well because you yeah. dedicated this to your parents, didn't you? <sighs> yes. Um, yeah, my parents are absolutely incredible. Um, my mother is my absolute everything. Um, without my mum, I wouldn't be here today. Oh. So, please give my... My mum is in the audience. Uh, I want everyone to give my mum a round of applause. Uh, she's just absolutely incredible, honestly. And without my mum, I, I don't know what I would do. She's like my heart and soul. So thank you for everything. Oh. So, Nicholas, what, what was your, your journey to top level motor racing? Because yeah. it is a fiercely competitive mm. sport. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I was born too much premature diagnosed with facet diplegia, with former cerebral palsy. Uh, my parents never wrapped me up in cotton wool. They just let me get on with things. And, um, you know, I had to overcome my condition initially. And initially, that was to become normal. I wanted to, to be a normal person. I didn't want to be treated any differently. I got bullied at school. And then I, a period of my time, like at 16 years old, I decided I need to actually get out of my wheelchair. I was in a wheelchair for five years. Um, what actually pushed you to decide to get out of your wheelchair? Was there actual... <laughs> Event that moment. Took that moment. Yeah, it was a real turning point. Um, we were actually going away with Lewis. We were at right. a, um, an airport checking in for a, for a flight. And this lady, she didn't look at me. She just looked at my mum. She said, mm. Mrs Hamilton, does your son require assistance? Can he do this? Can he do that? And I've been in my wheelchair for, like, five years, so I was ripped. I was buff. I, I, looked... I felt it when you came <laughs> out. <laughs> I look sexy, you know? And, 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 <laughs> you know, and, and, and this able-bodied... Uh, lady didn't see me mm. and didn't speak to me and you know I can definitely answer my own questions and I didn't take it out on her I was upset with myself I thought mm. I became lazy and I have the ability to actually walk if I physically try right. um, and so I thought right I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it I didn't tell my mum about it I just decided to start walking try and walk and I haven't been in my wheelchair for 16 years wow. oh. but that must have been wow that's an enormous thing that would take a huge amount of grit and, like, determination to yep. go from the wheelchair to walking. What, what was that? How um, did you do that? It was because, you know, my life in a wheelchair was going to look bleak. And, 
you know, I wanted to have a, I wanted to have a girlfriend. I wanted to have relationships. I mm. wanted my mates to think I was cool because disability, I was taught at school, is not cool. Mm. Um, and because it was getting more difficult and difficult every day, um, I just struggled with my, my purpose. So I decided to, to start walking. It was, it was hard because my legs were like mush when I first started walking again. Wow. I couldn't walk to the toilet and back without being tired, you know? Um, but then I got out of my wheelchair, I was strong, and then I got my opportunity to mm. potentially race a car. And then I had to train like an able-bodied person mm. to race against able-bodied people because mm. I'm basically like a Paralympian in the Olympics. Yeah. Wow. But am I right in thinking mm. to, for motor racing, you need incredible strength, mm. but, you know, because yeah. to just handle that car going at those speeds, I mean, yeah. it is really demanding, isn't it? Yeah, because absolutely. Everything is like braking. Braking is everything um, for safety, but also for time, lap time. And braking in a race car is like doing an emergency stop in your road car and you've got to push like 70 kilos worth of pressure. So when I first started training, I could only push 10 kilos with both of wow. my legs and I needed to get to 100 at least with my left leg. Um, so I just tried and pushed so much. Three hours a day I was in the gym for two months and you know, my, wow. my, my pelvis was coming out of line and my, my spine was, it had scoliosis and so I was popping ribs and stuff, but I knew it was a chance to change my life. I love you said that so just, He's... just popping ribs. <laughs> I mean, you're, Mom, you're that was happening here, are you? I think uh, I need to uh, re-incite my uh, gym. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, but excuses. I suppose you had like an end goal in sight, didn't you? You knew what you wanted. Yeah, my end goal was to race cars, because yeah. I always wanted to race cars, and I got to a point I could push 130 kilos with my left leg, and wow. I was then wow. strong enough to race, and... Um, that's all I wanted to do because I was brought up around yeah. motorsport. But you did see earlier, yeah, Lewis is my brother. Yeah. Um, how is that? Is it a bit of a kind of double-edged sword? Absolutely. I mean, first of all, I'm, I'm Lewis's biggest fan, always will be. Mm. Um, he's got millions and millions of fans saying they're his biggest fan, but no one's a bigger fan than me. Mm -hmm. But it also is hard because, you know, I am my own person. I have my own story. Um, and Lewis is just as much Nick Hamilton's brother than... Nick is Lewis Hamilton's mm -hmm. brother. And I believe he sometimes kind of turns up incognito at your races to, to watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he came to, uh, you know, the most amazing day of my, of my life so far, and that was Donington Park last year, um, where I achieved uh, sixth place in a BTCC race wow. in front of him, um, in front of my family. Um, much about racing is that like a really it's a big deal big big race <laughs> <laughs> is that the technical term because this is you're you're, you're in able-bodied races Absolutely. you're not yeah yeah so the wow. british touring car championship is the pinnacle of british motorsport yeah. you can't go any higher in the uk um i'm the only disabled athlete in the in the field um you know and really you think about it my mum you know had me you know at four pound four two months premature and we've gone wow. from wheelchair to bullies to racing cars, to creating history in the sport and inspiring as many people as we can. And that's what I want to do with this. It's so funny, cos right at the beginning of this, when, when Kay said that you've been reluctant to write the book and you this said, is... well, because I feel like people sh should write books when they've gone rags to riches, and it's like, what else? What... Yeah. I mean, it's a totally extraordinary story, and it's Thank like, you. that is the greatest riches, really, isn't yes. it? What you've what you've achieved. Are there still things that you're striving for within the... Um, well, look, I, 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 struggled, I struggled for purpose when I was a kid, didn't understand why I was the way I was, and I've now realised through, through a lot of therapy, I'm in therapy and I'm not in shame, or mm, have any shame that. about that. Yeah. Um, I realised I'm not here for me, I'm here for other people, to spy, inspire people through my voice, so I do a lot of public speaking, speaking to you know, multinational companies, trying to spread my voice. Everybody has a, a, a powerful voice. Um, but when I was a kid, I didn't think anybody gave me their attention, everybody just looked mm. past me. Oh, but now I have your attention, which is why the book is yeah, called that. that. You know, I want to inspire people with mm. my journey, but my journey is not any special to anybody else. Um, it's just what worked for me, and, Hopefully, it inspires both disabled people yeah. and able-bodied people at the same time. Well, Nicholas, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Absolutely. And you can see, thank you so this much. This is the book. Now I have your attention, and you most thank certainly you. do. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. Nicholas,